Welcome to the Urban Income Show, where we speak with minority CEOs, CMOs, CTOs, founders, and other executives to learn about their strategies for success. I'm your host, Laval Chichester, CEO of Growth Skills and Urban Income. And today's episode features Carson Humminston. Uh, Carson is the founder and CEO of Vangst, the cannabis industry's leading recruitment platform, which is backed by Cole, Casa Verde, and a few other VC firms. Carson was featured on the 2018 Forbes 30 on the 30 list. She grew Vangst to $1.5 million in revenue in two years, and she raised $30 million in funding, and her company has a valuation of $105 million. Carson is incredible because she did all of this right out of college. She had a dream, made a plan, and is making it happen. This interview is one of my favorites, so let's jump right in. Tell everyone your name, your occupation, and um, and let's start from there. Yeah, hi. It's great to be here. My name is Carson Humiston. I'm the founder and CEO of Bankst. And so, where were you born? What you know? What do you identify as? And what's your, what's your nationality from a gender standpoint? What's your nationality? Right. I was born in Buffalo, New York. I'm a female. Um, I'm Amer- I'm an American. Let's go Bills. Uh, so, Let's go Bills. Bill Mafia. Um, yeah, that's part of my identity York. too. Yeah. So it's funny. My wife is from Toronto, and I never follow football. But we live in New York, so we would go up with the family to watch the Bills game, and they would fly down. They would drive down from Canada, and it's like it was been. It's been a, a tradition. And you know, Peter, our producer, Ken, last time, and we have this gross mask that we make everyone wear. Uh, <laughs> it's like the best. The best uh, tradition, and um, but you know, Bill's tailgate is 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 fantastic. It's crazy. It's crazy out there. We we actually, so I live in Denver now. Uh-huh. That's where I am right now, and so where most of our team is. But we have a a small Buffalo team. Okay. So and we, we've got a, and so we all with we went with the Buffalo team to a Sunday night football game in the in the fall against the Packers. We won, and it was a really. Fun time. First time going to a game in a, in a while. So it was great to be back. That's amazing. I remember I, I, I was in Nashville and and the Bills came to play the Titans and they just were not prepared. That city was not prepared for them. <laughs> and I started seeing the shirts. I was like, oh, no. And then my my friend was just showing me the clips. He's like, what is this? It's like guys running, diving from the parking lot over concrete onto the table, missing. C- and missing. Like, yeah, exactly. it's totally wild. It's so funny, and um, so that's awesome. And so, so you moved to Denver, um, to 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 start Vang. So, so tell us about that. What is Vang, and and um, and why did you start it? Yeah. Well, to back up a little bit, I went to so, like I mentioned, I'm from Buffalo, New York. I went to college at this school called St. Lawrence, which was in upstate New York. And I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. So during my time at St. Lawrence, I started a couple businesses. Some of them failed. I did this thing called Ambit Energy, which like my friends thought was a pyramid. My friends thought was a pyramid scheme, but it actually was multi-level marketing. And I was selling at deregulated energy to all the people across St. Lawrence. And one of the companies I started was a student travel company. So I had a decent list of students and recent grads who had gone on my trips or one to go on my trips. Again, this was a small, small business, nothing super impressive. But um, I, I asked all the people, what industries are you interested in getting jobs in? And actually my dad, who's an entrepreneur and what, one of my entrepreneurial inspirations, he had been looking into the cannabis industry. So I knew about it. So I, I included cannabis as an industry people could be interested in. And I got a lot of responses of young people saying they were interested in jobs in the cannabis industry, which this was 2015 when I was graduating college. And at the time, cannabis was only legal for adult use in Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. So it wasn't, it wasn't hot. There was still a lot of stigma around it. It was pretty wild to think about people from New York wanting to work in cannabis. But I was very interested, and that's what led me to start researching this space, understanding what kind of jobs existed in the space, and I, I, I had enough of a, I had enough of companies that said hiring was a really big challenge, 
and enough potential candidates that want a job. So the original name of the company was Graduana. And I made the, yeah, and I made the website at St. Lawrence uh, and it's called Graduana Green Jobs for Grads. Work with me. I'll help you find a job in cannabis. And that's how the whole thing started. Go ahead. Yeah, so I so I start Graduana. I graduate college. I move out to Denver. And I'm placing entry-level people into jobs in cannabis, Graduana. And I had enough traction where I actually hired a couple people at Graduana. But w- then we were starting to get requests for, I'm looking for a director of cultivation. I'm looking for a COO. I'm looking for a dispensary store manager with extensive retail experience. So the name Graduana wasn't working. We were calling up people and saying, hey, this is Carson. This is Jordan. We're first hire from Graduana and people were hanging up on us. So we were like, we got to, re- we got to, we got to relaunch. We got to actually make it go. So, so Vangst means catch in Dutch. And when we, when we, when we launched it, we had a very small marketing budget and there wasn't a ton of thought that went into it, but it was like, okay, Dutch, Amsterdam, cannabis. We also thought if you get placed into a job, you're considered a vangster. Damn, it feels good to be a vangster, original vangster. Um, we would send we would send boxes in the mail to people that we placed that literally you open up the box and it says, um, damn, it feels good to be a vangster, hashtag original vangster. So we did a ton of fun stuff with it. And I... I love the brand. It worked out perfectly and love, love the name of our company. That's pretty awesome. And so do you think like gender nationality and, and where you were born has anything to do with your, your success so far as in launching what you've been doing? So Buffalo, I, I think people from Buffalo have a certain level of scrappiness to them. Um, cool, for sure. And... I think that's definitely played a part in it. And I think that the the people that you surround yourself with play such a big role in however um, your life shapes out. There's a great saying that you become the five people that you spend the most time with. And so I was really lucky that uh, my dad was an entrepreneur. And so I grew up around watching him build his business, the, the highs and the lows of seeing an entrepreneur. So I had an idea of what it was. And also I had the support of Say, I'm moving to Colorado to start Graduana. A lot of people would have said, are you out of your mind? You need to go get a job. You need to get a job. You're not doing Graduana. But my, my parents were very supportive of it. And so I think that the people that you surround yourself with play such a critical role in, in what you do. And it's been really, it's, it's something that I, I, I am, I'm, an inten- I'm intentional about the people, that, the, the people that I spend my time with because I want to spend time with people that I want to be like, that I aspire to be like, and that can bring me up and make me the best version of myself. And I hope that other people feel the same about being around me, that I can help them be the best versions of themselves. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think all those things play into anyone. Yeah, I think the 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 ethos is, and like I mentioned, we we run a company, a growth marketing company called Growth Skills. And basically the ethos that we've studied, because I wanted to be a naturalist when I was younger, Basically, there's only two types of relationships in nature. There's symbiotic and parasitic. So every flower needs a bee, every bee needs a flower that creates ecosystems, right? And that's why we're alive on the planet. And when you think about, you know, who could choose, and parasites trick blood and they leave and they spread disease, but it's humans and and corporations that could choose to be either parasitic or, or symbiotic. And I think the time that you spend with people, if they're of quality, you're going to just build with each other and you're going to grow. And there is no tearing down, if that makes sense. There's, there's only basically growth, right? And um, so I love that. When you when you think about, um, so let, let's look at why. So even with the headwinds that's happening in cannabis, have you, have you, have you seen, like, why stick to the guns and why only cannabis? Or do you plan on expanding at all? Yeah, it's been a tough year in cannabis. We actually just came out with our jobs report. It's an annual report where we look at, we partnered with Whitney Economics, which is the leading economics and data firm in cannabis to look at each state and see how many jobs are created. And this is the first year since legalization started rolling out across our country that we saw a decline in jobs. So jobs went down by 2% year over year, which was a little bit disappointing. Now, here's what I would say to answer your question around why 
why I stick this out despite headwinds. Last year in the limited, the very limited, regulated cannabis market, there was $25 billion worth of sales. This is a number we expect to grow without any form of let federal legislation, just, just if we continue going state by state, to over $75 billion over the next five years. That means job creation. So while there was certainly an industry reset and we're going through an industry reset and there's a capital crunch and prices are depressed and there's all kinds of headwinds, the bottom line is that people are consuming cannabis and purchasing cannabis and it's here and it's here to stay and it will create jobs. And I think that when the going gets tough is when there's even more opportunities. Um, so I absolutely would never give up just because something got a little bit tough and it actually motivates me because I think a lot of my competitors and others are um, giving up and calling it a day. And I would never do that. All right. So, so within Canada's placement, they're giving up. Um, that's really interesting because I see, I see it exactly how you see it. Now is the time to dig in and really establish yourself and, and cause it will come back. Right. And even, oh, yeah. even, even when you look at, I think, the, the other thing is like not every state has legalized yet, and I think even if it's slowed a little bit, though every every market that has opened to record or medical, uh, every new market is new jobs, and so I think you've got like you could literally sort of map a, a roadmap of expectations of markets you could you could enter right from a, of from course. a standpoint right obviously from a placement standpoint. So that you know, I I think that's a the right and an, an incredible answer. And where do you see, like, having support from uh, uh, the the Casa Verne folk? Because they've, they've uh, tell us that story. How did you, because, you know, our audience on the urban income side are listening and, and, and want to know, you know, how to be an entrepreneur and, like, okay, what advice did you use to actually grow your business? But, like, from a VC fund, like, how has that support been? And, uh, and I talked to current. And it's really interesting what, what they're looking at, what they're doing. So how has that been? It's been great. We love we love Curran and the Casa Verde team. So thanks for the first three years, we were bootstrapped. And we did not have, we were not, we were, we were building a, we knew that we wanted to be more than just a search firm, but we were getting off the ground by being a search firm. And in the middle of 2017, we used some of our profits to hire our first two engineers. So guy named Mike Olson, who I met out of a coding school where I was um, had renting a seat, actually, when we were first getting started, galvanized, and a, um, a man named Mohammed, who was actually an engineer we found on Upwork, and he lived in Pakistan. So we had an offshore engineer, Mohammed, who, incredible, and Mike, and they we, we hired them to build the first version of our platform. And this is before we had any DC, because we really did want to be a true marketplace versus just a manual search firm. And so we got that off the ground and we got some initial traction. And actually, my friend Ryan Smith, who runs a company called LeafLink, he w was saying to me, Carson, you should really consider raising VC money. You could scale faster. You could build your product and engineering team faster. You could get into more markets more quickly. But I, I, I got to be honest with you, I really didn't even know what VC was. I thought in order to grow a business, you be profitable and you take your profits and you reinvest them into growth. That's how I thought you did it. Um, but because of my friend Ryan, I decided to look into it and ultimately decided to go down the path of VC, which is what led us to Curran and the Casa Verde team. Got it. And and so you raised money. And then what sort of things did you put that into? Like the tech, the marketing, in marketing side? How did you, like, what did you focus on from the growth standpoint? Yeah, so the first round that we raised was our seed round, and it was a $2.5 million round. And the real purpose of the round was to um, build out the first version of our platform and specifically focus on what our product called Banks Gigs. And this is where we provide our customers with short-term temporary employees. So these are Banks W-2, ready-to-work, badge-credentialed employees. We They go to our customers, they work their shifts, we take care of the state and federal taxes, workers' compensation, badging. Uh, we pay the workers. And so we really focused on building out that product. So we built it out and we launched in Colorado and we had really, really good success in Colorado. And we then 
went and raised the Series A with the idea of taking this product and launching it into more markets. And that, that was a $10 million Series A. And then just last year, we raised a $19 million Series B to roll out some additional products and expand our core products into more markets. Uh, so we've, you know, it's funny. In the last, I went from thinking that we weren't going to raise any, raise any VC to raising over $30 million in four years. So it's been kind of a crazy, crazy journey for me as a first-time founder and certainly first-time real VC back founder. Well, of course, <laughs> that's fantastic because that's, you know, raising money is not easy. And, um, and uh, yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a really amazing story. And when, when you think about what do you think Vent, Vent is going to be? Cause you could be like glass door. There's a lot of, a lot of avenues that you could go down. And I, I, from looking at like where you're ranking the terms that you're ranking for from a search engine standpoint, um, just looking at all those things, I really think you could really just dominate if you, if you uses like Rich Barton, his model, who, who basically is a founder of Expedia Glassdoor. What he does is does he focuses like SEO content and ranks for all the terms and then uses like, and I could show you this, he creates like a data loop by getting people to create user-generated content. So leaving reviews, all those types of things. And that creates a moat around his businesses because no one else will have that data because the people who have found you, who have signed up for and using your products basically are creating content that they won't create for anyone else. Right? But the reason they're creating it is because they want to review the job. They want to leave these reviews about about um, about um the places they've worked and, and all those types of things. But I think you've got something really powerful there. And, uh, but I'm just curious, what, 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 what's the... What's the roadmap? Yeah, that's really interesting. That's a really interesting point around the engagement from the users on reviews. And it's definitely something that we've thought about. We want to be the place that cannabis employees go to get credentialed. So to help get their state required badge to get trained and to ultimately get their job. So I, I, would, I would be satisfied if every worker in cannabis was getting their cannabis license, getting their cannabis training and getting their cannabis jobs through Bankst. Um, that, that, that's what we want to be. I don't, you know, I don't like to say like Vangst wants to be the LinkedIn for cannabis or Vangst wants to be the Indie for cannabis or Vangst wants to be the Glassdoor for cannabis. Vangst wants to be the Vangst for cannabis and we want to crush this. But the outcome that we're looking for is, you know, what I just said, we want candidates to get in, get credentialed, get their job, get their next paying job, um, all within Vangst. That's amazing. And so, and I love that too, because you will be your own and, and you are your own entity and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll carve your, your own name in the universe. And, and now look, we should certainly. You say that with your whole body, which I, which I love. I mean, it's like, well, 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 we've got ex- which is, which is really, yeah. it's really important for anyone listening because it's not like, not like, it's not copying. It's like it's being, in, you, I think you said it earlier, being intentional about everything that you're doing, which I think is really incredible. Well, and I think that you can learn a lot from a lot of different companies that have had a lot of success. And so we have advisors from, we're super lucky that we have um, advisors who, who are at Indeed. We have advisors who have sold companies to Indeed. We have advisors from ZipRecruiter, from Upwork, from Snagajob, from lots of hiring marketplaces. And we can learn so much from what businesses have done really well and what businesses haven't done well and create, you know, to your point, be our own, you know, we don't, I think you fall into a mistake if you say, as an example, Indeed does this, so Vanks needs to do this because there's different dynamics at play for every business and every industry. So I like to be careful that we don't just straight up copy someone and we want to find our own, be authentic and be true to ourselves and do what's best for us while, of course, learning from the best in the biz every day. Absolutely. And explain, explain the, the, the training side of it. Like what, when, when you say training, what do you mean? Yeah. So we just launched this product called Vanks Learn, and I'll give you a live example of how it works. So one of our first customers is, um, one of our first customers is LeafLink, actually a company that I just mentioned before. So LeafLink is a marketplace in cannabis. And so LeafLink, has two trainings that they created. LeafLink for retail employees 
and LeafLink for brand employees. So when you go on to banks.com and you're applying for a job in a dispensary, in a retail, that retailer, if they use LeafLink, they can recommend, hey, before you apply to this job, get credentialed and how to use LeafLink. So it teaches them how to use the product. Then once you complete the training, you get a little special badge on your profile that says LeafLink certified. So now as a customer, if I'm hiring for someone in a dispensary, I can search Bud Tender, Colorado badge license, LeafLink credential, and those workers will be served up to me. So it's helping me as a candidate stand out from the crowd. It's helping me as the customer hire people that have the skills to succeed in my business. And we're doing it on the on the brand side too. So another com- customer that's doing this with us is Wana Brands. They're an amazing, they're the number one edible country, the number one edible product in the country. If dispensaries that sell Wana, which most do, can say to their workers, before you come and apply here, get trained in how to sell Wana. So when you step into my store, you know how to sell this brand. Um, and so, so it's a way to help workers get the training they need to stand out from the crowd. It's a way for customers to better qualify and credential workers and doing some cool work. And you're, you're providing this, this service from a, and tell me about the training. Is it like video production? Like how it's video, it it's, 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 it's video. And it, they're, it, they're, it's micro learning. So most of the videos are between three and five minutes. And then there's a quiz at the end of the video. And then if you pass the quiz, you get the badge. You get the badge. Okay, very cool. Yeah, yeah. That's similar to, we're called growth skills. So we have a, a learning IQ and we teach on SEO, digital market, that type of thing. No, that's really, that's really powerful because you're going to be the glue basically that everyone has to pass through in order to get the credentials, like you said, uh, get trained up. And um, and honestly, get a get like a a competitive advantage to 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 suck themselves apart to actually get the job, right? Absolutely, and and get ahead into the next job. So this is the first phase of the learn product that we're rolling out, but we have visions to do much deeper training. And so let's say that I'm a bud tender, I and I want to eventually become a assistant manager and a manager. What are the skills that I need to move up to actually get that next job? And so we have. We don't have this yet, but we have a vision to do much more than just the micro learnings and do more advanced learnings. And I, I, the next time that I, if I ever come back onto this podcast, um, I'll have updates for that. You know, I'll have updates for that next quarter. But anyway, I'm really excited about the learn product. I think that it ties our whole vision of getting everyone jobs into cannabis together. And this was our first month of launching it. And like I said, we got our first 10 paying customers and we've gotten really They've been really excited about it, so I'm I'm op- optimistic that this product will do really well. Yeah, no, it's I think it's it's essential because just think about how hard, like at having built out Learning, it's really hard for these brands to do it themselves. So they need a partner, and when you think about like the maintenance, the growth, like all that, all that is very so having having a solution come through, um, you know the the partner. Banks, that's also going to help them find the candidates. I think, I think that's incredible. So, so a, a brand could come to you, use the marketplace, find the candidate, and then I, as a as a person wanting to get into cannabis, can go to you, target who I want to work, find the find the jobs, get trained up, and then and then apply. Yep. And so, cu- cu- there's customer profiles and candidate profiles. So on the customer profiles, customers can have pictures, mission, vision, and values, benefits, and perks, all their trainings, and all their jobs. So that's what you can see. And it, and on the candidate side, you make a candidate profile. You can have your all of your skills, your experiences, your credentials that you know, such as your state required license. Every state or most states have a different license that you need to work in the space. So in Colorado you have what's called a med badge. So you go through the Colorado Marijuana Enforcement Division and they issue you a badge. You upload that to your bank's profile because that's required to go onto the job on day one. And then you take any of these trainings and any of the quizzes that you pass, you get that special badge in your profile. Now you can match the jobs. Customers can search you. Um, Messaging is a new feature that's rolling out in our next cycle. So you'll customers will be able to message candidates in app, which is I'm excited about. Um, and look, this is what back to your question around VC. This is a this is an expensive endeavor to build this product, and this is why we needed to 
bring on investors, but our investors are really aligned to this vision. And I really think it will be worth the big investment. But marketplaces are really hard. Like you always have a chicken and the egg problem. It's like we either have too many jobs and too many companies and not enough candidates, or we have too many candidates and not the right jobs. And so it's a really hard nut to crack. I'm laughing when I'm saying nut to crack because the other day my fiance heard me on a call and he heard me say it's a really hard egg to crack. And he was like, no, it's a nut to crack. Um, but it's a hard nut to crack marketplaces in general. And so we got a lot of work to do, but I feel like you're fired up about it. Yeah, no, I, I'm excited because I didn't realize it, it's, 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 it's incredible. And looking like, obviously, I'm, I'm a growth guy and I, I could look at, um, and actually we did, we did this exercise for, uh, for Casa Verde where, where we looked at where you're ranking for like certain keywords and all of that. And you're, you're in position one for cannabis jobs, um, but you know you could rank better for dispensary jobs. There's all these target keywords, and what people don't really understand is when things are tough, especially in a market where you can't bid on things or in Google Ads, SEO and content's the way to go. And like like you, you have such an incredible opportunity. Um, and I'd love to talk to you more about yeah, that. Yeah, let's talk about it because I agree with you and and. We want to double down on the areas where we can get the most, you know, organic traffic. Yeah. Let me actually show you this real quick um, so that you can get a sense of what I'm talking about, what I'm like. And I'm, I'm like a, a nerd about this type of stuff. So when I drop your site into Semrush, I could see all of the keywords that you're actually lying for, right? Okay. And I could see the search volume. I could see your position. And I could see the intent for that specific word. So you've got brand pages, and it's a very smart strategy to run for the brand pages because you'll see that they get, some of these things get crazy amount of search volume. So that's forty thousand searches every month. Once you get to the first like top five positions on Google, you're going to get a percent percentage of this in traffic, and then you see that from a keyword uh, difficulty, how hard it is to rank for the word. That this number is a number from zero. To 100, um, it's pretty easy to write for some of these words, even if you're looking at legalization. And then when you see some of the top positions that you're in, you know, cannabis jobs, position one, you know, you need to get this dispensary job. We need job to get one. dispensary jobs up. Yeah. So that has 44,000. So there's a lot of research, just double clicking in here. But there's all these things that, you know, I'd love to help you with. But outside of this, too, so the fact, like, what people don't understand is, so we built Flavor Fix. So Flavor Fix is the, 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 um, the first yeah. site to cater to cannabis, CBD, and alcohol, right? Because usually you got the cannabis and CBD, you have the alcohol. There's behavior shows that people like both. So this is what we've built. And in building this, we, we rang for so much and we did it so fast. And it's because people, I feel like in this industry, don't understand SEO yet. So there's a there's a competitive advantage for being first, and yep. when I look at uh, when I look at what what you're trying to target, you would dominate for for facts. So so there's that. So I, that just makes me excited. Well, that um, makes I'll, me feel good that we're doing something right, and we can do yeah, better no, and more. It, but so there's always more, right? So like you're ranking for around ten thousand keywords. Um, so I'll give you like flavor fixes ranking for around thirty thousand keywords, but I think. You have the ability to just rank and rank and rank for work for more, and just literally lock down this entire this entire category, um, because just for the simple fact that you're already ranking for you're doing you're, you're doing a good job. You have domain authority, which is the ability to rank. So, um, so so all those things, and I, I, again, um, you know, there's growth loops that you could create in there. Um, and all these things will lead to some sort of conversion from uh, someone signing up to um, to be to actually be either a brand or or a, a, or a job finder. But I want to go back to this question on, you know, you're you're doing a lot of amazing things. What um, and I think you're perfectly positioned because of the because of the trading at, at and job placement. Are you doing anything from a from an equity diversity standpoint? Especially like prison reform, any of that. 
So we just we just were, were we've just partnered with the state of Colorado to do all of the training for everybody that has been in the program to win a equity license in the state of Colorado. So we've been contracted by the state government contract to do all the training. It's going to be, you know, when I when I mentioned there's going to be much more robust training there. And that's step one. But step two, I want to take it a step further and do I think it's I think it's very important in our industry that we prioritize both ownership and employment. And so I think that the states have done a good job of working with people to win licenses. But I also think we could be doing a much better job of helping folks that are coming out of the prison system, coming back into society, getting good paying jobs and helping them get trained to have those skills. And I feel as though that's where banks could provide the most value. And so we've partnered up with several organizations and in, in, in we help, we partnered up with several organizations like the Last Prisoner Project and the Weldon Project to help people as they get out of prison to help them get jobs. But I want to take it a step further and help with the training piece because I feel like training is such a critical piece to ultimately getting a job. But yeah, it's absolutely horrifying what's happened with the war on drugs. There's 40,000 people wrongly incarcerated. We know that the majority of those people are minorities. It's disgusting. You and I are sitting here talking about cannabis jobs and all this wealth being created, and there's still 40,000 people locked up. And so how I think banks can give back here is to not only um, donate to folks that are helping get those folks out, but ultimately help them um, get good, high-paying jobs. And so that's what we've been trying to do. No, that, that's amazing. And, and I, feel like, I feel like you're the person who's doing, not trying. <laughs> and you, know, you already got Colorado locked as a, from a from a partner to a government contract to allow you to do that, that I would imagine you, you know, you show success, roll out to New York and to, to the other markets, which Absolutely. I think is pretty incredible. Um, it's actually see- super funny that it's actually super good time. It's actually super funny timing that we did the podcast today because we just got, we just got the approval from the state of Colorado. Like I literally just sent our board an email saying that this is officially a go. And I don't, that's amazing. Yeah, um, I think we'll do more of like a broad announcement when we actually kick off the training. But the state of Colorado is incredible. And the folks that work in the office of cannabis are incredible. And the way that they're going about it's incredible. So we're proud to partner with them. But we would love to, um, if if we're impactful here, have the opportunity to try to be impactful in more states. That, I think that's that's amazing. Do you Do you see yourself creating a, a, a training program to help, you know, it's one thing to get a license and then it's really hard to run a business. Like, like you could get that license and yeah. just. Yes. Yeah, so what we're get and like, <laughs> like have a real big problem on your hands. So do you, do you see yourself supporting in that way? Cause I see that as an immediate need, you know? So what, yeah, it's exactly what we're doing. So we're doing more of like for this piece of the training with the state, we're doing a masterclass approach. And so we're finding top operators who are experts in their field to be on the video for the training. Think masterclass. So think, um, you know, cannabis finance 101. We're going to find the best CFO in the state of Colorado from the best operator. They will want to donate their time onto this. And there's going to be a masterclass style of teaching and learning so that we can leverage true experts to provide the training. Because it, look, I think you know, going on and watching a video from just an instructor that's never done it, I would be less engaged. You know, I'll tell you, I I have subscribed to actually Masterclass. And the class that I really liked the best was the course from Sarah Blakely, the founder of Spanx. She's the first woman billionaire. She invented Spanx. She never raised any money. Incredible. And I loved learning from her more than I would love learning from a random Joe that's never done anything. So for our training program for actual operators running businesses, we're leveraging the best of the business here in our home state of Colorado. Yeah, that's the answer to that to that question. Yes, we're doing that. Um, I, if you like her, you should listen. Have you heard her uh, "How I Built This" episode with Guy Ross? Best one. First, first. That was the first "How I Built This" episode. Best episode. It's so good, right? Like, hot. I'm reading the book right now. I'm reading his book right now. But that episode, I was like, this is incredible. Yeah, um, that's very cool. And so. From uh, okay, so that uh, I mean, you're doing. I- I'm gonna give you this. Uh, what are you proud? Of? We don't need five. What? Because you you already said a lot of incredible things you're doing. But like, what's the one thing you're proud of the most that you've done in the last five years? 
probably found my life partner. I'm engaged. I'm getting married in August. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. How how did you meet them? So his name's Jeff, and I think the person back to a point that we made back to a part of this podcast that we talked about in the beginning, the people that you spend your time with are so important. And so the person that you choose to spend the rest of your life with is probably the most important decision that you will ever make. At least that's how I feel about it. Um, Yeah, I met Jeff. We have a mutual friend, a guy named Burke. I went to college with Burke. He was Jeff's best friend from growing up. Burke was a couple grades ahead of me, so I didn't know him super well. And Jeff moved out to Colorado and we got connected through Burke. And yeah, now we're getting married. Shout out to Burke, man. Bring Shout out to Burke. He, he's, he's the best. He's the best man in our. He's the best That's man amazing. in our wedding. Yeah, I love that. That's cool. Yeah, no, I mean, and for everyone listening, I think even just having any soup before you try and go do anything from an entrepreneur standpoint, you're gonna need your family and your that situation taken care of. And I think there's nothing more important than having a supportive, you know, partner, wife, husband, partner. Uh, my wife is a hundred percent down for for the growth skills cause and everything that we do, and I, I don't think I would be the same human. I'm up just a way better human being because of her. So, uh, so no, I absolutely congratulations. That's that's amazing. Uh, and so daily habits, routines, anything you're doing that um source of inspiration because you know what what keeps you because you raised a lot of money. You have, you know, people that you have to be accountable for. You've got a marketplace, which is not easy, like both sides of the that fence, and you're doing ambitious things. How do you just stay focused and, and get it done? Yeah, a couple of day-to-day habits, and look, it's always a moving target. Um, so a couple of things that I would call is like leading habits. So when I do these things, the things downstream go well. Two very simple things for me. One is continuous learning, whether that be through reading books, which I listen to on Audible or podcasts, just listening to other people and their perspectives and what they're doing in the world. That always just keeps me motivated. And so I really try to listen to podcasts, things like I like the Tim Ferriss podcast. I like how I built this. Listening to interesting people. I listen to the All In podcast to stay up to date on what's going on in, 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 in business and tech. A um, couple other venture podcasts that I, cause is, that's just a simple thing that I really, in, in reading, listening to one audible book a week, just, so I would categorize that as um, learning and staying curious. So that's number one. Number two is exercise. I really prioritize exercising, specifically doing exercises outside. I love hiking, biking, skiing, swimming, trail running. Um, On Tuesdays, we do something at Vegas where I do a hike and anybody at the company that wants to come hiking with me, we can do. So yesterday, our our head of product came with me and actually an investor who was in town joined me. So I did that. I do that. And then a third thing that I I do is just, um, and I, I, whenever I do it, my life is better. So whenever I find myself not doing it, I try to step back. Just a quick 10 things I'm grateful for that day written down can be as small as I'm grateful for this great cup of coffee that I'm drinking right now. I'm grateful for this new hire that we made. I'm grateful for my sister. I'm grateful for the weather. I'm whatever. Um, It puts things into perspective. I think I, I'm sure that many people are listening. When you really think about it, you have so many good things going on. And when you focus on the good things, thoughts become things. So think the good ones, more good things will come to you. When I find myself constantly thinking about this customer didn't pay and this investor is driving me crazy and this is happening, more of those things start to happen. So I'm really trying to think positive. And when I do that, more positive things tend to happen. So those are three things that are simple. Anyone can do them. And and they help me a lot. I think. That's probably one of the best parts, and we're going to make a short out of that, especially the point on uh, thoughts become things because, you know, you, you definitely manifest your your happiness and your and your your own misery through, you know, positive or negative thoughts. That's 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 amazing. What did you wish you did with your money sooner? 
That's a good question. Um, you know, I think at, 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 and I would just, you know, say this for anybody in the early days of banks, we didn't set up, you know, we, we were just getting started. So we didn't set up a 401k or we just didn't set up things like that. You know, I didn't set that up until I was, I didn't start putting money into my 401k until I was 27. Cause that's when we rolled it out. It makes a really big difference. If you start putting even a couple thousand dollars away when you're 20, when you're 60, you know, the compounding interest on that really adds up. So look, do I think that's going to change my life? No, but I wish that when I was 20, I would have set something up like a 401k or something like that. Um, because you can't get those, you know, your twenties are a great time to start investing. Even if it's a small amount, it really, really adds up. So my sister's six years younger than I am. And like the day she got out of college, I was, you know, really beating that drum. It's not really a regret because I don't even know if our business could have afforded to set it up. And I don't know if I would have had any extra money at the end of the year each year to put any in when we were first getting started. But um, generally speaking, I'm pretty conservative. I keep my burn pretty low. Uh, I don't have super expensive tastes. I am not going out to clubs and, you know, buying bottle service. I don't really care about clothes that much. I think I'm a pretty low key person. So I'm pretty happy with, you know, my my, you know, what I, how I set my life up financially. Oh, that's awesome. So basically takeaway there is 401k early, especially if the company matches because it's free money. Yep. All along. So if you're listening, do that. And if you don't know what that is. Ask your boss at your job and, and all of that or HR. And then, um, and it's never too early to start. And then I think the other thing you said was keep uh, your bur- keep your burn low. I mean, well, keep, by that I mean like I mean, don't get yourself in over your head, right? I I see a lot of people do this thing where, you know, they want to spend a little bit beyond their means, yeah. and it just you don't want to do that in your twenties. This is a time to be accumulating, not spending, and you can get yourself in over your head pretty quickly. So keep your personal burn low. Um, so that you're not living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. It's too stressful to live that way. And what's funny is like Kern used the word burn. burn. He said the same thing. Uh, Beth Peretta, who, who, uh, Pe- who was the principal at Peretta Owner Sport, the first female Ford racing team, she's just like, spend lower than, like, like spend less than you make. She's just like, that's the secret. Literally, she's like, my mom told me that's the secret to, to success and happiness. And I'm, I follow that. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's really simple. But I think that what you hear is earn more money or earn more money. People like get more money, get more money. But, you know, if you're spending more than you're actually make, making, it doesn't work out. Like, and look at all of the cautionary tales of the millionaire sports a- athlete. Yeah. Who, they yeah. go broke because they're not, they're like you said, popping bottles, spending, you know, taking the entire crew on vacation. And you know, back it real fast. Um, and then, so what other what other side hustles like have you had outside of the meat career? Not, not, not really any. It's been all banked. Um, I don't have any other side hustles. I'm I'm on the board of my high school, which is a donation. Um, so it's not a side hustle. I'm I'm in like, a you went from you went from college straight into like your own business and never looked back. So I mean that that is that is very impressive. I don't think I've talked to anyone who's done that. And in and and in a big way too. It's not like you're doing something incredible and incredibly unique. Like you're making a new thing in a uh in an industry that is that is like you're you're going to you are the future of this industry, which is uh well the present and the future, which is pretty incredible. Um, and there's no, I I can't see anyone coming in and snatch, snatching your position based on everything you got. You you basically just told, uh, you've told me, um, you probably get acquired. Is that why you're interested in acquisition? I don't. I mean, I, I get asked that a lot. I, I'm interested in building a great business that customers love and that every year continues to grow, and that we have a team of people that I love being around and I'm motivated to be around and investors that believe and support the future of, you know, of of course, when you take on venture capital, they don't just give you money to be nice and they're all looking for a return at some point. So likely, yes. 
But I think we're a long ways for that, from that. I think we have a lot left to prove. We have a lot left to give to the industry and build and just focused on how can we best service our customers right now. Perfect. If anyone listening wants to become a mentee or work with you, is that possible? And how would they be able to do that? Yeah, absolutely up for it. I I would say um, best way to get in touch is trying to think of a scalable way to do this. Maybe direct message me on Twitter at Kay Humiston and can understand you know, more what you're looking for and see how I can help. Awesome. And if there's any one last bit of advice you would give to your younger self, what, what would that be? I think I would just say to my younger self, it's going to be okay. Take a breath. Like the sky is not falling. I, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a, um, a flaw. It's like what I call the chicken little, chicken little syndrome. So the sky's falling and I, it's still a flaw, but I, I think I think I've improved it. And I, the things that I thought five years ago, when I, when I look at the situations where I truly thought the sky was falling, you look back five years later and that was nothing, right? So I would just tell myself that the sky's not falling. It's going to be okay. Stay true to yourself and your values and um, it will be okay. I think there are a lot of people who need to hear that because people, people do it all the time. And so you're not alone in that. So I think that's, that's incredible. Is there anyone in your network that's an incredible minority um, women founder in the, in the SWIFT community that you think our audience would benefit from them coming on and dropping some gems? Yes. I, I think our VP of people, Sierra Parks, incredible incredible it in and i and the reason why i would recommend her is that she really does a good job of helping people with in organizations becoming the best versions of themselves okay and she's very involved in the cannabis industry she's of course done a great job um for our business she's she's very involved in helping minorities in underserved communities in cannabis and she's just the first person that came to my mind that's amazing um so i would love to love to talk I'll, with her I'll, yeah i'll introduce you to her and i think i think her because like everyone listening entrepreneurship is great it's hard as hell um but there's also something called entrepreneurship where you are able to function and act and create and innovate within a company as if you're a, you're an entrepreneur, but you're not. You're in you're building within the company, and that is very good practice. And I think we learn a lot from Sierra. That's amazing. Um, so that's it. Uh, so Carson, thank you so much for being on the show, everyone. That's it. You know, my name is Lavalta Juster. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Urban Income Show. Um, you know, follow us, subscribe, visit urbanincome.com. To, um, to watch all the episodes and we'll see you on, on, on the next one. Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Urban Income Show. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow us on social, and visit urbanincome.com.